Well, today I'm turning back the hands of time and I'm turning my digital camera into a film camera. Well, kinda. For the past three or four months, I've been primarily shooting digital with the camera I'm filming this video on, my 5D Mark IV. And the reason why I switched over to digital besides cost, okay, it, it was mainly cost, but I did go on a huge film bender before that and I just decided to take a step back. And so when I finally decided to revisit film just last week, I realized that my work was changing and I was creating images that were much different than my usual stuff. Now obviously when you switch cameras, especially if it's from digital to film or vice versa, there's going to be a change, especially with the tactile experience of a manual camera, loading the film, all of that jazz. And I get that, but I'm more focused on what happened to my artistic style, which we'll get into later. But first, I want to jump back to the digital camera becoming a film camera and what all I did during this shoot. Obviously, I'm not turning my 5D Mark IV into a film camera for this video, but I'm going to pretend with a few of the rules and restrictions that I placed on my camera with a few modifications, and I just want to shoot my digital camera as if I was shooting film. So the first rule that I'm following while shooting today is I have to be mounted to a tripod at all times. And the second rule is that I have to be on manual focus the entire time. And the third rule that I put on today's shoot is a two second timer for every exposure. All three of these rules, the first ones, will just slow down my process, which if you ask any film photographer why they shoot film, it's always because it's methodical, it slows them down, they have to think about each shot a little bit more. So. Hopefully with these three rules in place, I'll check that box and I'll be able to be closer to a film experience. I think number four is pretty self-explanatory. I got my LCD screen blocked, so I have to wait for development, which is me dragging my photos into Lightroom, but that will make sure that I only you know take one shot and I have to stick with it. Oh, hey, how's it going? Good. Oh, I'm just a photographer. Um, I got a... Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. If you watched my video on how to take photos of strangers' homes, I'll put the card up there. That was step number three. Just lie to them. is I can only take 36 photos on this SD card. Obviously, that's just the true nature of a roll of film. I'm pretending, I guess, that this is 35 millimeter. Of course, I got the infamous Portra 400 in here. So 36 frames, I, I gotta work with that. Now obviously my Mamma Mia, Mamiya ripoff camera is not going to give me film like qualities or anything like that. I'm not actually claiming that this is anywhere close to a film camera, but I wanted to make these changes and rules and regulations on my shoot and see if it would facilitate any change that I saw when I switched over to an actual film camera. A few big things I noticed while I was shooting film the other day was that my compositions became very minimalistic. I was zoning in on smaller things in my environment instead of trying to capture the entire scene. I also noticed that I was opening up my aperture a lot more as opposed to when I shoot digital, I try to keep it closed so again, I can get the entire frame. I also found myself paying closer attention to texture and light as opposed to objects and lines, which is usually something that I emphasize in my work digitally. This 
despite the medium, whether it's film or digital, being a part of the overall message you're trying to portray with your images, the fact of the matter is, if the camera does its job, then it really shouldn't matter what camera you're using, but it ends up mattering a whole lot, at least in my case. And so I wanted to make this video to try to dissect this conflict and see what it is that is actually making a difference. And so after a bit of self-reflection and shooting with my Mamma Mia camera for two days, I boiled it down to three main points that I think might be causing my conflicting interest between film and digital cameras. So the first and obvious thing between film and digital is something that I tried to heavily address throughout the process of shooting the images in this video, which is the speed of your process. Now, number two is something that actually took me a while to think about, and it came to me during the process of this video, which is a lot of times when I shoot film, and I think other people do it too, it's not only about the image you're taking, but what you're taking the image with. What I'm getting at is the film stock seems to be a huge component of how I shoot. Obviously, if you're shooting in black and white, you're not paying attention to color, you're paying attention to value and maybe texture a little more, but even between different color film stocks, you might be paying attention to your environment or scene a little bit differently. And it's also a huge flex to say that you shot on Portra 400 or some expired film that you found in your granddad's basement. So what I'm saying is oftentimes the film stock and even the camera you're shooting with becomes a part of the message or the image itself which isn't necessarily a bad thing and I get it's part of the medium but it does change the process and it's something that didn't hit me again until I started filming this video Now the third and final thing, which I think might be the biggest culprit of them all, is that film is a vibe. The vibes. Once you scan the image, maybe with the film border on top, you put a hashtag on that bit, and all of a sudden, you're not just a photographer, you're a film photographer. And again, I'm not throwing shade, I'm guilty of it too, but I do think that it's part of the biggest reason why people either switch the film in the first place or B, change up their style drastically when they do so. I may have different thoughts than a lot of other people about including the film border on your images. I think it might be a little tacky and again, cliche, but that shouldn't stop anyone else from doing it. And again, like I said in the last point, it becomes part of the image. So as long as it is tying into whatever you're trying to do or accomplish with your photography, then do it. I get all of it and I'm not trying to make fun of anybody nor am I trying to make fun of film photography as a whole. I shoot film, obviously. I shoot with my grandpa's film camera from the 80s. I shoot expired film. I do all of the cliches. That's not what this video is about. And again, I, I, I shoot film. I'm not trying to tear it down. But I do think it's appropriate to try to understand the differences between the two mediums and how it may affect your photography or your view on photography as a whole. Now, do I think my Mamma Mia camera was effective in trying to help me recreate my film experience on digital? I mean, kinda. Was it really authentic? I'm not sure, but all I can tell is that I will be shooting film and digital because I respect them both and I enjoy the properties of each medium and I think it's cool to shoot film so I can put some cool hashtags on my photos on Instagram and I can also do some crazy HDR stuff on my DSLR. Also, I'm gonna start posting on YouTube Monday and Friday, so subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss a video. Hit the notification bell if you want to and go steal your grandpa's camera from his attic. All right, goodbye.